everybody stand up one more time. All the fellas, where you at? You know what time it is. Drop down, fellas. Give me 10 at least. Come on, L. Come on up here. Who else? Come on, Demarcus. Don't, no, no, no. Come right up here on this stage. You're going to do these 10. For those at home, we doing push-ups. Let's go. Before you sit down, find four people. Fist bump them. Tell them this word is for you. Four people. That was one. That was one. That's two. That's three. You got one more. Aventer, you only did three. You did five? All right, well, I'm number six. Did anybody fist bump Angela? Did you get four? Not playing. Luke chapter four, let's get into the word right now. No time to play games. Luke chapter four. Luke chapter four. <sighs> We're in the certified series. Anybody in here certified? Who preached last weekend? Pastor Lamoris. He did a phenomenal job. Excellent job in the word. So proud of him. And of course, Relentless Vow. Week three tomorrow. It's been amazing. You got to get there. Married, single. It's complicated. Uh, whatever it is, if you want to uh, strengthen your relationship or get wisdom on how to have a godly relationship, you need to get there tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. Doors open at 6.30. 7, it starts by 8.30. It's done. Bishop's Chapel, we have child care available. It's amazing. And they got snacks out there. I'm just saying, that's good snacks too. I saw some rib tips. It wasn't out there. I saw some. They weren't at the church, but they got some Ritz crackers for you and a Capri Sun. Um, <laughs> Luke chapter four, while you're going to Luke chapter four, I want to give honor to Dameron Batson Jr., who is back in the house with us. Dameron, we love you. Who's that little baby boy you got with you? I know it. That's Landon. Landon Batson, and he is here. And let's, let's just thank God for Dameron and just his wife, Haley, and just the faith that they've had to walk through this season. We love, y'all can do better than that. We love you. Your family, your Relentless Church family stands with you, whatever you need. We are here. We're long haul. We, we don't, it's not the two-week church and nobody bother. You're going to be sick of me. I'm checking on you. A year from now, I'm going to be in the window knocking. You all right? I love you. You're an amazing man of God. And the way that you loved your daughter, the way you covered and prayed for your daughter, the faith that you stood in for your daughter, honored God. Our job was to stay in faith. It was God's job to make a decision. 
but we never changed our confession. And I thank God that I learned to stand fast. And it is well, I believe, with your soul, and we stand with you and your wife. We love you. Luke chapter 4. Somebody say, I'm certified. So Jesus came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down, case closed. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him, and he began to say to them, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. I just caught something because the word scripture is capitalized. Because what he was saying is now, this is not words on paper. I am the word. So it goes from small case S to capital S because the scripture is the word. God is his word. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So now God in human form, Jesus says this scripture, capital S, is fulfilled in your, I am this word standing here. Come on, Holy Ghost. So all bore witness to him and marveled at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, is this not Joseph's son? The title of my message is Certified Anointing. Certified Anointing. Pray with me. Lord, get the glory out of this message. Shake heavens. Make every devil in hell bow down. Save souls by the hundreds. And give miracles by the pound. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. The word anointing has been used too loosely and has become uh, a casual word in church worlds. And it is not a word that is to be taken lightly. The word anointing uh, is sometimes uh, conflated with gifted. You see someone who's gifted they move you with their gift. Ooh, they are anointed. It's church words. Oh, she sang so good. She's anointed. Oh, my goodness. That man, he, boy, he preached. You heard the way he hooped at the end. He's anointed. She's anointed. But today I want to talk to you about the biblical truth of the anointing. Because I need you to understand that... For many of you, you are getting ready to come into a realization of who God made you, how God made you, and why God made you for a specific purpose and task. We learn about the anointing oil in the book of Exodus, and you can read about it in the 30th chapter of Exodus, starting at the 22nd verse. And it says these words. Moreover, the Lord spoke to Moses saying, also take for yourself quality spices. Somebody say quality. Don't tell me it's the anointing if it's not quality. 500 shekels of liquid myrrh, half as much sweet smelling cinnamon, 250 shekels, 250 shekels of sweet smelling cane. That sugar cane for those who are not yet fully training, like they had cocaine in the Bible. I did not know. This is crazy. Sugar cane. <laughs> you can laugh. Y'all real deep this morning. 500 shekels of cassia, according to the shekel of the sanctuary, or, or the, the, um, the, the measure that is being utilized for weight, according to the measure of the sanctuary, 
uh, and then a, a hen of olive oil. And you shall make from these a holy anointing oil, an ointment compounded according to the art of the perfumer. So there is an artistry to the anointing. You cannot be haphazard with the anointing. You don't play games with the anointing. It is not something to take lightly. The word itself and the actual substance of it, it is not a game. For too long, the church has become a little too familiar with God. And I believe God has taught us in the Old Testament that there was a reverential respect and distance between God and the people because uh, the things that you're closest to, you often take for granted. If you don't believe me, ask your spouse. Real quiet in here. And so... It shall be a holy anointing oil. With it you shall anoint the tabernacle of meeting, the ark of the testimony, the table and all its utensils, the lampstand and its utensils, and the altar of incense, the altar of burnt offering with all of its utensils, and the laver and its base. You shall consecrate them that they may be most holy. The anointing is to separate you from the crowd. You are not average you are not regular you've never been that and every time you've you've attempted to be less than what God called you to be ordained you to be and fashioned you to be you've been frustrated unhappy and disgruntled because you know in your spirit that you are called to be more than the surroundings and even the definitions of people that have spoken into your ear gate am i talking to anyone in this church or online who's a part of this church somebody say most holy don't treat me casual. I've been consecrated. I've been set aside by God for a purpose. Watch this. Whoever touches them must be holy. We, that's a whole other sermon, Pastor Robert. Not only am I anointed, anybody who's in relationship with me needs to not only understand my anointing, but they must be anointed as well. Whatever touches them must be holy. And you shall anoint Aaron and his sons and consecrate them that they may minister to me as priests. So the original intent of the priesthood was not to reach people. The original intent of the priesthood was to get in the presence of God and God would meet the needs of the people. Today, we've got people who stand up in, in, in buildings across the world trying to make people think that they're so amazing that you've got to get to them. And unless you get to them or only talk to them or hear from them, then, then, then you're never going to be what God created you to be. And I reject the notion of people worship. Any woman, any man that wants you to worship them has a demon. I'm not playing with any devils today. I've been up since 3 o'clock this morning, so I'm, I'm going to say whatever comes to my mind. I'm going to say it again. Anyone who wants you to think that you need them in order to get to heaven or you need them in order to fulfill every aspect of destiny, anyone that puts themselves between you and God, not as an usher to get you into the presence of God, but as a stopgap, as if they are the only way to get to God, that is a spirit and it is not from God. You don't worship a woman. You don't worship a man. You don't worship a platform. You don't worship a building. I pray that this building is, is uh, uh, free from attack or uh, destruction for as long as God has relentless in the earth. But if there was a point where this building was no longer here, this building is not the church. The church is the church. 
and the church are the ones who are clapping right now. The church are the ones who are typing in the, in the chat feed on YouTube Live and Facebook John Gray Ministries Live and, and OurRelentlessChurch.com. That's the church. The church are the ones that are coming through the doors and God forbid anything to happen to this building, but if it did, the work of the church would continue. You don't believe me? Elder Jesus said, tear this temple down. In three days, I'll raise it up. You want to know where the church is? The church is right on the outside of an empty tomb. Oh, the church was built by one stone being rolled away by an angel. And the Bible says the angel sat on it. Sit on it. Woo! And so the original intent of the priesthood was to minister to God, God would meet the needs of the people. Somebody say, I'm anointed. So the first thing you need to know about the anointing is anybody who handles you needs to respect and reverence the anointing. They also need to be separated and consecrated as well. Stop allowing people to handle you or have access to your life that don't respect the position God has given you in the kingdom. Stop talking to people that treat you like you from 10 years ago. Stop talking to people in your family about deep and intimate things who only see you as the cousin from 25 years ago at grandma's house. Stop allowing people to keep you in a place that you have graduated from because you are not that. You are anointed now for something that is bigger than the experiences that got you to this moment. Somebody say, I'm anointed. And I'm not just anointed, I'm certified. The Bible says, God said, when you make this oil, don't make another like it. There's a difference <laughs> between the art of the anointing and the manufacturing of the oil. There are people who manufacture oil every Sunday and if you're, not, if you're not discerning, you'll assume that what you're smelling is the anointing. But you have to have a discerning nasal palate to discern between that which is God and that which is not God and is masquerading as from God. Every person singing ain't saved. Every person preaching isn't filled with the Holy Ghost. Every person that's in a position of power is not walking in humility and kindness and holiness and character and integrity. Everybody that's walking around doesn't have the same commitment to the principles of New Testament church growth. Everybody's not anointed. Get that in your spirit. It's also important for you to know that everybody's not happy that you're anointed. There are some people that are deeply uncomfortable with the fact that God has chosen you to do anything because they have never seen you clearly and properly and they don't want to see you as anything other than your worst moment or your worst mistake or what they remember about you. But the thing about the anointing is it's so fragrant and so potent that it moves any other stench from your past and any other thing out of the room. When the anointing hits the scene, everything in the room carries that fragrance. You ever been around somebody that's truly anointed? Even when they leave the room, you still feel the residue. Am I talking to anybody? Will somebody help me this premium morning? Somebody say certified. There's a couple things I want you to know about the anointing. I want you to get this really in your spirit. The anointing is an unmistakable identifying mark that God confers on a person for the purpose of accomplishing a specific task that is in line with God's preordained will. I know that's a lot, so you're going to go have to go back and, and, and listen to this, but for my family from Arlington, Virginia, I'll say it again. The anointing is an unmistakable identifying mark that God confers on an individual for the purpose of accomplishing a specific task that is in line with God's preordained will. Everybody say this one more time. I'm anointed. 
No, you need to say it on faith until I give you the next 15 minutes of instruction so that when you say it the next time, you need to say it with a level of vim, vigor, and vitality, fervor, and, and an assuredness that shakes devils off your life. Say it like you mean it, and I need you to type it in the chat feed for I come through this computer screen into your house and throw your fruit loops on the floor. I want everybody to say it, and I need you to say it with some bass in your voice and some some air in your chest through your mask. I need you to say it. I need you to say it like you mean it. Say, I'm anointed. Some of y'all can't say it like you need to because you're sitting down. Some of you need to stand up and say it because you need to go ahead and agree with God and stop fighting God on what he said about you and I'm going to ask you to say it again and I need you to say it like the king that you are, like the queen that you are, like the leader that you are. I am anointed. Now if you know that the one who anoints you has backed your words, then I triple dog tear you. I said, I triple dog dare you to bless God right now. We are not leaving this church until somebody realizes that all the hell you've been through is not because of something you did wrong. It's because of something God put on your forehead. You wouldn't have been under attack if God hadn't put his hand on you. The devil wasn't even thinking about you, but God swiped your forehead and said, she belongs to me. He belongs to me. The next thing that happened is all hell broke loose. I'm talking to somebody in here. Now don't get me started, Pastor DeMarcus, but a man who just had to tell his baby girl goodbye just walked to the altar and sowed a seed. You got to know that the attack of the devil is intensified based on the concentrated power of the anointing on your life. The more anointed you are, the more attacks will increase. Stop saying, why is this happening to me? It's happening because I'm anointed. It's happening because I have purpose. It's happening because I'm this close. I'm less than an inch away from walking into the fullness of what I was created for. I can feel it in my spirit. I can feel it like Phil Collins. I feel it calling in the air tonight. Oh, Lord. I've been waiting for this moment for all my life. Is there anybody in here that knows today is the stirring, Minister Chris, of the anointing that's been dormant on the inside of you? Somebody say it again. Ah, Denzel, say it like you mean it. I am. Elder, something about your hands lifted deeply offends hell. And if I were you, I wouldn't put my hands down till I feel that thing break. Let me tell you something. When you lift your hands and you're anointed, ah, the people of God advance. You don't believe me? Ask Moses. He was anointed. And as long as his hands were up, they were able to be successful, but when he got tired and put his hands down, the enemy was able to advance. Don't you ever doubt how important you are to God's plan. Keep your hands up. Throw them up till your shoulders burn. And if you got to lean your hands up against the wall until you get your breakthrough, then do what you have to do. But your anointing is not optional. God needs you on the wall in this season. God needs you shouting like you've never shouted before. You are anointed. I need somebody to shout through that mask. I need you to go ahead. Don't lift the mask. Just shout it. Somebody say it again. Something's breaking out in here. I'm anointed. I am anointed. I am. What is God's name? How did he introduce himself? So when you say I am anointed, God anointed. 
God anointed me. I know that offends some of the people who are close to you because they could never discern the totality of you. They like the bite-sized version of you. They like the Halloween candy version of you. Not the whole bar, just a little piece. Stop, stop doing life with people that only want a little piece of you. If you can't have all of me, if you can't, if you can't digest everything that I am, I don't need you in close proximity to my life. You don't get to take a bite out of me and then go do what you want. No, I'm anointed. It's either all or nothing. Either you're my friend or you're not. Either you're my sister or you're not. Either it's family or it's not. And if the answer is yes, then we're going to do this thing like this right here. I am anointed. And stop selling yourself short. I need you to do me a favor. I know you got that mask on, but does anybody smell that? Hold on. I smell something. I smell. Hold on. Hold on. I, I smell a chain breaking anointing in here. I. Wait a minute, hold on, no, 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 wait, it's not just that. Oh my God, there's a, an anointing for wealth accumulation also. Wait a minute, hold on. It's on this side, isn't it? It is, there's a wealth accumulation anointing on that side. Wait a minute, there's a merger and acquisition anointing on this side. Wait a minute, where's the anointing for real estate development? Where? Wait, there's, hold on. There's another anointing in here. It's the, anoint, it's the anointing for home ownership, not renting for the rest of your life. Where is that? Wait, hold on. Wait a minute, hold, hold on. There's a laying on of hands anointing in here that the moment you lay your hands, the stuff shrivels and shrinks. Wait a minute, hold on, hold on. There's another anointing in here. There's, oh my God, there's an anointing to cast out demons. Somebody in here is not afraid of the devil and you can cast that devil. Who am I? I smell. Because the anointing, according to scripture, is a perfume. And ladies, y'all know about perfume. Yeah, you do. Yes, you do. When you want a certain mood, you put on a certain perfume. Fellas, you know you put the good cologne on when you, you know, trying to put the thing down. <laughs> She's going to love this. The problem is the church has been trying to make its own fragrance. And if you're not skilled in the art of creating the true oil, the true fragrance, something stinks. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. You've been to churches. The song sounded good. What the preacher was saying, what she said, what he said, it sounded good. But something stunk. You couldn't even really tell anybody because everybody else was like, oh, my God. He's like, oh, yeah, that's it. You coming back? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Who am I talking to? Here's the thing. Oil attracts oil. And real oil repairs fake oil. There are people who you wanted to be in relationship with and they can't be because the fragrance on your life won't allow for counterfeits. Did you hear what I said? Your fragrant anointing. Here's the thing. Not only do you have a fragrance, Here's what you need to know about the anointing. It doesn't have an expiration date. That's for anybody who the devil has lied to you and said, you missed your moment. You missed your chance. You missed your open door. You missed your opportunity. Ah, uh, you too late. You too old. It's never going to happen. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm anointed. And my anointing does not have an expiration date. This is not bread on a shelf. This is not fruit in the, in the grocery store. This is the anointing oil. That's the way you can tell a difference between somebody who was trying to write a gospel hit and somebody who wrote a song to give God glory. Because the reason 
reason why I told Minister Dante I want a hymn every week is because when they were writing them hymns, they weren't thinking about radio airplay. They weren't thinking about making a music video. They weren't thinking about going on tour. They were thinking about how good God had been. Or they were thinking about how God kept their mind when they had to bury their wife and their child. When they sing Precious Lord, he meant that thing. When he wrote It Is Well With My Soul, he meant that thing. That's why you can still sing it today. And the oil that was on it when they wrote it is still on it here a hundred years later because the anointing is an eternal touch of God in the moment you're in. That's why the anointing doesn't have an expiration date. So for anybody who wants to write you off because of your age or your lack of experience, they better back up, baby, because the anointing on you does not have an expiration date. Oh, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Do this. Go ahead and just right here on your chest, say, I'm one of a kind. Say it again. Say, I'm one of a kind. Uh, look at somebody. Tell them how you doing. I hope you're well. You're standing next to a masterpiece. Just tell them. Tell them like you mean it. If they looked at you cross-eyed, look at somebody. Excuse me. How are you? Tell them, how are you? Hope you're well. Hope your family is well. I'm amazing. I am the greatest me that has ever been made. There will never be another me. I'm anointed to be me. I'm not anointed to be you, but I'm anointed to be me. I'm not insecure about your calling because I'm too busy living out my calling. I'm anointed to do what I was created to do. I'm not in competition with you. My fragrance is not trying to outshine or outsmell your fragrance because when we both do what we're created to do, then it becomes the compounded anointing. Ah, you might be myrrh. I might be cassia. You might be cinnamon. You might be the olive oil. But all of us together create a fragrance that God gets the glory out of and people get saved filled with the Holy Ghost and the mighty burning fire tell somebody I'm anointed don't get too casual with me don't play with me I ain't your little play thing I ain't your little friend tell so don't, don't, don't play game put that in the chat feed. don't play with me I'm anointed let me tell you something. Jesus had a functional, and I feel God in this church. The problem, nephew, is that some people who say they're anointed are also weird. You ever seen somebody that's, I'm, I'm anointed. God has called me to a great and mighty purpose. Why are you speaking in a British accent and you from Columbia, South Carolina? Since when do you have to be weird to be anointed? That's weird church stuff. Let me tell you, the best oil is functional. This is why, oh, I feel God. I love Jesus. He had a functional anointing. Need to write that one down. See, the church has been too busy trying to scare people into this weird pseudo relationship with God that's based on shame and guilt as opposed to being functionally anointed. What is a functional anointing? God has chosen imperfect people to smear with his presence. Your job is not to walk around like you did something. Your job is to walk in humility saying, I can't believe God chose me. And since he chose me, I'm going to be faithful to what he asked me to do. Oh, my God. I need your help in here. I need your help because I'm getting ready to say something. Stop arguing with God about what he put on your life. I'm going to come over here. I'll say it again. You've been trying to talk God out of the calling on your life like he didn't know who you were and what you do and what you still do. There are three things you need to know about God. Well, this, this is not one of the three, but the first thing, this is not on the list. He is not dumb. That's number one. He's not, I, I'm trying to figure out who I'm going to choose to be anointed. Any, me, me, mine. No, 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 no. The anointing is God's preference. 
I'm, I'm, I'm teaching. The anointing is God's preference. God decides who he wants to anoint. Pastor Robert, put some oil on my hand, please. Put some oil on my hand. Some oil on my hand, please. Please just give me some oil. Thank you. You always overdo it with the oil, Pastor Robert. I love you. I asked Pastor Robert for, <laughs> this smells good. What is this? This is a new oil. This is not, the, this is not your regular oil. This is your super unleaded oil, Pastor Robert. You, you say this for special occasions. This that next level oil. Come here, Dameron Jr. Come here. Hurry. Yeah. Come here, Elder Johnny. Hurry. Come here, Elder Johnny. Hurry. This is a different oil. When you go through hell, you get a different oil. When you have grief like that, you have a different oil. You were standing there, and, and, and God said, I'm putting something new on Johnny. I'm putting something new on him. And so I'm going to do what he said. So I'm putting this on you. There's something new on you. Stay right there. Don't move. You should smell that. You smell that? That smells real good. Doesn't that smell good? Oh, my goodness. Woman of God, black dress, come here. Quickly, 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 quickly. Quick. Both of y'all, since you started moving, that's good. I said black dress. They ain't talking to me. I said black dress. I know that's your mama, but you come up, but, but it's for her. Come here. Help her up. Come here. You smell that? That's freedom. That's deliverance. And it's not for you only, it's for the people that you come into contact with. You're going to be able to lay hands and they're going to walk in a level of freedom and deliverance. Stay right there, don't move. I said stay right there, don't move. There's a fragrance on the anointing. And no one can duplicate it because no one's lived your life. Do you understand that the oil that you carry is because of the life you've lived? Watch this. And what you didn't know is that your tears were watering the bottle. Is that the scripture? He says he catches your tears and places them. You didn't know that your tears were a necessary component of the anointing that you carry. You ought to take a moment and say, God, I didn't know what the grief was for, but the grief and the salt content from your tears actually mixed with the other ingredients to give you a unique anointing that will allow other people to get free. Ask somebody, do you smell that? Oh, Lord, help me, Holy Ghost. Does anybody hear what I'm saying? All right, y'all go ahead, go be seated. I don't know what's getting ready to happen next. Oh, help me, holy Jesus. Help me. Help me. Do you know who you are, elder? I was standing there during worship. I watched you stand up, and it blessed me because you're so faithful. You're just always there, and it, it, just, it just really blesses me. Come here, sir. Come here. You came all the way from Arlington, Virginia. Come here. I need somebody to understand what's happening. You didn't come here for a sermon. You came here to be activated. Okay? So I'm just agreeing with God. The oil is on your life. And this is the moment that God says everything that you've been writing in your journals and the things that you've been praying about before the sun comes up are about to come to pass in your life. And the, and the visions that he has shown you were for this moment. You were wondering when, what's the timing? God said the timing is now. It would not have worked before, but it's going to work now. I need somebody to say now. So this is about, something's about to happen. I don't know if we're going to get out of here, but God just released a right now anointing. Did you hear what I said? No, y'all didn't hear what I said. I said there's a now anointing. What do I mean by that? Jesus was 30 years old when the Holy Spirit descended in the form of a dove. A dove. In the scripture we just read, he said the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit 
came upon him. Then what did he say? Because he has anointed me. Wait a minute. What do you mean he's anointed you? I thought you were already anointed. Yeah, I, I was anointed. I, I, I always had an assignment, but I had to go through the process. before I could activate this oil. What do I mean? I know that I was called to ministry at 13. God always had for me to be a pastor in the years to come. But my process was necessary for the oil that I stand in now to be functional. Some people want the anointing but don't want the process. You want the oil, but you don't want to go through the wilderness. You don't want to tell the devil, get behind me, Satan. And Jesus, before he came on the scene, had to go through the wilderness, rebuke devils, and get baptized. But you just want the oil and to do what you want. But that's not how the oil works. Y'all can be seated. You can be seated. I need you to get this. When you're anointed, you're anointed not just in a general sense. You're anointed in a very specific sense. You are anointed for your assignment. I need you to write this down. Anointed for my assignment. I'm anointed for my assignment. The reason why your oil didn't fit anywhere else is because you weren't assigned there. Some of you all have tried to serve at other churches. they have so insecure. Well, you know, uh, you really are talented, but I just, we, you know what? We already got somebody doing that. And, and, yeah, <laughs> Why don't you just go ahead and sit down for a little while? <laughs> they, they're so intimidated by real oil that they would rather celebrate the counterfeit than you were their invitation to the anointing. And they rejected it. Don't get mad if they didn't respond to God's RSVP. Lord what did God say watch this what did God say to Samuel he said don't be upset that the children of Israel once saw they didn't reject you they rejected me don't get upset with people who reject you they're not rejecting you they're rejecting the God who anointed you what did God say go ahead and anoint them give them what they want this is the only way that they're going to see the difference between what's manufactured and what heaven declares. And here's, here's what happened. When man tried to anoint somebody, Saul, deeply insecure, knew he wasn't qualified. When the real anointing showed up in David, what did he try to do? There are people who try to kill you with their words. They try to kill you with their mouth. They try to kill you with a look. They try to kill you on your job. But here's what's funny. You can't kill the anointing. So, somebody, I need somebody to get free right there. Come on, elder. He said, you can't do it. I don't know who that's for. You tried over and over to kill. You thought you were coming after me. You're not coming after me. You're trying to kill the anointing. And you better learn what happens to people who attack the anointing. But here's a lesson for all of us who have been anointed by God. Watch this. You've got to trust God to elevate the oil on you without tearing anybody else down. Oh, that's so good. What do I mean? I'm going to end right here. You're going to have to come to the next service to get the rest of this. What, what do I mean? Saul, when David was running from him, told his men, I can't put my hands on the Lord's anointed. He's tried to kill you twice. He's willing to kill priests just to get to you. Yeah, but he's still the Lord's anointed. But he's your enemy. Here's my question. If I was Bishop Jakes, I would say it like Bishop. What do you do when your enemy is anointed? What do you do when your enemy is anointed? You have to maintain your integrity and wait on God to determine whose oil will stand. 
Do you know what it's like to be me over the last three years when some of the people who said they loved me tried to kill my life and I had arsenal after arsenal. If I opened my mouth, I could tear, I would blow everything up and God said, shut your mouth. Why? He was led as a lamb. As a sheep before his shearers is silent, yet he opened not his mouth. Oh, there's something about a quiet oil. Who am I talking to in here? Oh, the real oil will always rise to the top. Listen to me. When you find that your enemy is anointed, you got to wait for God to make the distinction. You don't put your hands on her. You don't put your hands on him. You don't put your hands on that. You wait on God. <laughs> Pastor Ab, this is a word from the Lord. Watch this. Even if the person is wrong, the anointing isn't. This is going to help you because God has never anointed anything perfect except his son. I got so much in my notes. We're going to probably have to do this next week too. Y'all want some more next week? There's a couple things I need you to grab about the anointing. There's a couple things that will hinder your anointing. Number one, a lack of discipline. It doesn't stop you from being anointed, but it will stop the ability of you to be effective in full capacity if you lack discipline. If you have an unwillingness to corral your carnal appetites, it can hinder the full flow of the anointing. What do I mean? Samson was anointed, but he loved women and not just any women. He, did, he didn't want an Israelite woman. He wanted a Philistine woman. He wanted, he, wanted, he wanted the freaks. That's what he wanted. You read scripture. He even told his mama, get, get that one. And his mom and dad, which by the way, were too weak to tell him the truth and to tell him no. That's the problem when you got somebody anointed and everybody around them just tells them what they want to hear. That's the worst thing in the world. You setting up people to die when you don't tell them the truth. I don't mind conflict. I really don't. I got people on my staff and they will come and tell, hey, pastor, I respect you. I don't think that's the way to go. No, that's not, that's not a good idea. And there have been times when I've been mad, but you know what? I listened. Because in the multitude of counsel, there is safety. Samson was a brute. He said, I don't care what you're saying, daddy. I want her. She pleases me. What he said is I'm turned on by her. And because he didn't get corrected, because the parents were too too excited that they had an anointed son. He ended up dying prematurely blind because the thing that he was looking at was designed to poke his eyes out. Stop looking at the thing that's coming to blind you. Lack of discipline and willingness to corral your carnal appetites, and the false assumption that the anointing gives you a pass to skip process. Just because you're anointed don't mean you get to walk past people and not speak. Don't think because you're anointed that you can treat people like trash because you think that's what God would. Don't you think because you got a robe on and you got a special gold cross that you get to walk past people and not speak and, and treat them like you whatever and, and make a, you come here and you do what I said and you take my shoes off and unbutton my shirt. I'm anointed. You better un unbutton your own shirt. Take your own shoes off. I've been around some of that in my years. It's scary when you so anointed, you can't take a dump without somebody in the room. No, that's worship. That's creepy. You want somebody to make you a God. That ain't the anointing. That's the devil. I got a lot more I want to say, but I'm going to leave it right there because I'm anointed to be the pastor here, and I'm going to be here next week, so I can keep preaching. <laughs> pastor Av, I got, I got so much more. Y'all want one more? One more? No. Y'all want to go? You got to put up one more, one more, M-O. You got to put one more, one, W-U-N-M-O, one more. 
You want one more? I need, no, you can't get two. You're being greedy here. Watch this. Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me. You would think that the people that he was talking to would be excited. They rejected him. Stop waiting for everybody to celebrate your anointing. The first sign of your anointing is rejection. Oh my God, Mike, did, I don't think they heard me. When you are anointed, they, they are not going to like you. When the light shines on you like it did on Stephen, and he said, look, I see the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. They killed him because that kind of anointing offends the flesh. Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me. The first thing they said, ain't that Joseph's son? That wasn't a compliment. They were disrespecting him. What you talking about, you anointed? We know you. We know your family. We know your people. We know where you come from. We know, we, we grew up with you. Don't be shocked when your anointing causes even your family to push you away. Jesus had to die and get up before his brother James became a believer. There are some people, whoo, oh my Lord, help me Jesus. Until you die to your flesh and God gets you up, that's when your family's going to know, uh-uh, God's with her. God's with them. There's an anointing on this house to break chains. There's an anointing in this church for miracle signs and wonders. There's an anointing in this church for trillionaires. Not so you can walk around and throw your money and wear glass sunglasses at night. It's for you to build God's kingdom without having to beg people. Excuse me, could you help us? We gonna sell some fish dinner so we could get a new roof. The devil is alive. What you need, pastor? You need five million? Here you go. Y'all want a new facility for the senior citizens? Let's go ahead and build it. Here's 26 million. Here's 13 million for the youth facility. I need somebody to fight with me. I don't have a voice. I've been up since three this morning. I need somebody to understand me believing God for a million dollars is nothing. That's nothing because I'm believing for his house, his kingdom, not my house, my kingdom. Everybody stand up because I'll stay here all day. We'll run this service right into the 11. Play with me if you want to. Where's Baker? Jesus. Tell him be out here next time, not playing. Jesus. Take that heavy jean shirt off and then sweat it through it. The spirit of the living God is upon me because he has anointed me. I didn't anoint myself. When you are truly anointed, you don't have to, you don't have to convince anybody. Let me tell you something. I'm anointed in Dothan, Alabama. I'm anointed in Cincinnati. I'm anointed in front of cameras. I'm anointed in the bathroom. I'm anointed at McDonald's. I'm anointed in a forest with the animals. I'm anointed if no one sees me. I'm anointed in the swimming pool. I'm anointed in the shower. My anointing is not public. It is consistent. It is constant. I've been anointed. So what I am, I can function as that anywhere I go because I've gone through the process and my oil is non-transferable. Oh Somebody asked me yesterday. I got a chance to go to my hometown yesterday for a miracle meeting. That's all I can say right now. My wife knows the details. But through a series of supernatural, extraordinary events, I got a chance to go home. I drove around my old neighborhoods. One of my friends was waving at me, her and her kids. We went to school together. She was like, Withrow! And I waved. Street Justin grew up on Lexington. 
We drove past our old apartment. And I was thinking about how far God has brought me. I was thinking about how good God has been to me. And I just have to say this to encourage you. I don't know who this is for. God's about to bring it back around. I don't know who this is for, but whatever it, he's going to bring it back around. Whatever you thought you lost in influence or opportunity or open, God's going to bring it back around. I was sitting in a room, standing, excuse me, I was standing in a room. Very, very prominent individuals from around the world on the same street that my grandmother's house was on who prayed for me. And all of these, I mean, I ain't talking like I got a couple thousand in the bank. I'm talking mega. I told them all, I said, this, we're on Vine Street. I said, my grandmother's house was about four miles from right where I stand. I'm a miracle standing in front. Of, I'm here as a product of the prayers of my grandmother. Long story, very short. I was called at 13. I preached at 21. I was ordained in what, 20, 20, no, 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 in, in Dothan, 2010, ordained as an elder. Now, I'd been serving in all these churches, but nobody had ever ordained me because as long as you just a regular minister, you all right. But the moment somebody agrees with God, then something happens and God begins to expand you in the earth. I got ordained. Two years later, I'm at the largest church in America and nine, ten thousand 10,000 people start showing up because I walked through the process. God's not going to skip the process for anybody. We all got to go through it. He brought me back to my hometown to answer a prayer that my grandmother prayed in 1960, 1963, my mother said. It was 60 years. But God made a promise to my mama's mama. And 60 years later, I walk into a room and I tell these people with all of this resource, I'm the person you've been waiting on. I'm not begging for one thing because the anointing doesn't beg. The anointing arrives. I'm going to just say this last thing. Yesterday, I was at my hometown. And didn't I say, Mommy, I don't, I don't need your car. I said, somebody going to give me a ride home. I didn't know. I just need you to know that an owner of a sports franchise, a major sports franchise, the owner gave me a ride to my mama's house. I don't think you understand. I, 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 I went home on faith and got a ride from somebody that owns a team. And before I got out of the car, I prayed for him. He said, I feel God in the car. I didn't ask him for one thing. I don't need anything from you, but you need what I got. Because the anointing is not for sale. The oil on this house has just expanded and increased. This week, you will see miracles that you could not even articulate out of your mouth. If you believe it, say, I believe it. There are people in this room right now that need to give their lives to Jesus or you need to be a member of Relentless Church. If I'm talking to you, you need to get to this altar. Don't wait. Grab your purse, sir. Grab your wallet. Meet me at this altar. Relentless is my church. I'm joining here. Who am I talking to? Text SAVE to the number on the screen. Here they come.
I think y'all can do better than that. Stand with him, Pastor DeMarcus. Here comes some more. Here he come. He got the orange shirt on. Let's go. Wait, there's somebody else. We're waiting on you. We're waiting on you. Somebody else. God was talking to you. All right, I'm going to say it. The Lord says somebody here is about to make a million dollar decision. You need to move because God told you to. Who am I talking to? Is she coming? Come on here. Who else? Who else? Online, text saved. Get it right today. Is that you? Are you coming? Come on here. Come on here. I sound country, don't I? Come on here. That's because I've been hanging with my wife's people down in Alabama. Come on here. Look here, see. See, I know them, see. And they know me, see, and I know them, see. That is your granddaddy. I asked for your hand in marriage. He said, don't make me no never mind. They were trying to get rid of you, girl, because they knew you was expensive. I wish I had known. I still would have chose you. I know service has gone over. I don't care. Not today. Because somebody needs to know you're anointed. And here's the thing. All the stuff that doesn't make sense, filter it through the lens of your calling. All the attacks are not because God's mad. That's what happens with devils. I was sitting at lunch yesterday and all of these bumblebees start coming around the table because we had something on the table that had uh, molasses and honey in it. They're drawn to the fragrance. Now I'm trying to push it away, but it's determined to get to that container. The enemy is as attracted to the anointing as the people that you're called to reach. You got to be able to bring the right ones and slap the wrong ones. Everybody pray this prayer with me. Pray, pray, pray. Lord Jesus, it's me. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for the blood that was shed for me. I receive the free gift of salvation, not through my works, but the finished work of the cross. The blood is enough to pay for all my sins. Holy Spirit, come live inside and teach me how to be more like Jesus each and every day. You are my Savior and my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Somebody celebrate God. I want you all to walk this way. We're walking this way to Pastor Robert. We're gonna get some information. Let's celebrate what God is doing. Come on here. I love that shout. I need somebody in the back to shout a little louder. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you because he's anointed you for a purpose that's bigger than your pain and your past. Hands lifted. You better let the whole world know I'm anointed for this. May the Lord bless you and keep you, cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord God be gracious to you, show you his favor and give you his peace. If you know you're anointed online and in this building, before Pastor DeMarcus comes to give us instruction, I need you to shout like you have lost your natural mind and exchanged it for the mind of Christ. God bless you. God bless you. Let's praise God together.